So let's talk about using a Hackintosh as a photographer. What's up? This is John from John Branch Photo Photography and recently I did a video on the upgrades to my PC which you can find up here. And after I made that video I had a bunch of people asking me about how was my experience with a Hackintosh and just to show more information about Hackintoshes. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a little bit of a longer video, but something that talks a little bit more about my experience using a Hackintosh, kind of why I use a Hackintosh and how I went about finding the parts and the information and all of that stuff. So bear with me on this longer video and let's go ahead and talk about using a Hackintosh. So to start out, the reason I went with a Hackintosh is because the Mac OS stuff, Macintoshes in themselves, were overpriced and also the specs just weren't up to par for what I was looking for. At the time, I had been working at Apple for five years, so I was working in the stores. I've been a Mac user for 10 years, so I was total, total Mac fanboy. And I had just quit the stores. I had a beastie iMac at the time, but it was starting to get old. It was like three years old, two, three years old. And I was looking at more options. At that time, Mac wasn't really supporting their desktops. The Mac Pro had not been refreshed forever. And even when it did get refreshed, it sucked. And the iMacs hadn't been refreshed forever. And I was just kind of sitting there like, well, what am I gonna do? There were rumors about the iMac Pro. And when that came out, that was great and all, but it took forever. And then also it was mad expensive. So I started looking into maybe buying and building my own PC. So when I started looking into building a PC, I found the world of Hackintoshes, which I didn't even know existed. Basically, if you don't know, a Hackintosh is when you buy PC parts and load Mac OS on your PC. So after researching it a bit, it made more sense for me and my budget to go ahead and just build a PC and then put Mac OS on it. If you're looking into a Hackintosh yourself, let's go over kind of like the pros and cons real quick of why you may want to choose that. So starting with the cons, obviously it's not a real Mac. When you make a Hackintosh, there's a lot of wonky things and there's still stuff on my Hackintosh that don't really work correctly. I'll go over that in a moment. Also for cons, if you're not tech savvy, it's just, it's, it's a lot. I'm a noob myself at making Hackintoshes and I was able to do it, but it took a good amount of hours. And this is aside from building the PC itself. It took a good amount of hours just to get the thing up and running and installed and it's kind of stressful. And when you use it, you're kind of scared it's going to like break on you at times. So <laughs> there's a lot of little things. So these are going to be the reasons why you don't want to. For pros, if you're on a budget, if you want to know what goes into your computer, if you want to have more control over how your stuff works, that's going to be the why you want to choose a Hackintosh. If you saw my video I talked about earlier, I was able to upgrade my PC recently with the i9-9900K. So that's like an eight core processor. And that was only 500 bucks put a new motherboard in there and that's also only another 500 bucks. It's like a thousand dollars right there and I basically have a new computer. I don't have to buy a whole new Mac for another $3,000 just to get an upgrade. I can literally pull a part out, put a part in and be good. So make sure you really think about those pros and cons when thinking about going into a Hackintosh. So my experience with a Hackintosh has been overall really good, which is why I'm totally sold on them. And I think most people can do it. Someone like me who's fairly tech savvy, but I'm not like coding master or computer master. I don't understand a lot about the computer and how it works. I get the parts and things and I'm into it, but that's about it. If you're at that level, it's actually really kind of cool. So my first Hackintosh I built in a really small, small case. It was like a a bit Phoenix something and I wanted it to be small and kind of cute kind of like a Mac kind of cool um, and that was kind of a mistake on my end especially for my first PC build with that MATX motherboard and that small case it was a lot my big hands I was like in there like <laughs> it was it was the worst so I built the first one I got it working and everything was too hot because it was just so compact and my cable management was horrible so the whole system was like really hot for no reason and it was a lot so I ended up switching my case to the current case I have now which is a mid tower it gave me better space and I was able to get everything in there I also bought a part that enabled me to use the Mac OS Wi-Fi and the handoff stuff in airdrop I'll link that in the description below but 
with that part and then all the other parts I had, I was able to get my first Hackintosh running and after slaving away for a moment, I got iMessage on it working as well. Everything was grand. So I had my first hack, it was awesome. I was like, man, this is cool. And then I was using it and randomly the library folder literally disappeared and I wasn't able to save anymore. So I was trying to install like a new version of Lightroom and it literally just wasn't happening. And I was like, okay. So I do wedding photography. I cannot have my computer just randomly crapping out on me and then losing a bunch of weddings. So what I ended up doing is getting another solid state hard drive and dual booting now with Windows on one and Mac OS on another. So that made me initially switch to Windows. So I use Windows now for most of my photo editing, which is totally fine. Honestly, Windows 10 is great. And for all you photographers who are hating on Windows, and you're like, Max, the only way, I would highly, highly recommend checking out Windows 10. It's really good. It's pretty stable. I've been on it for two years, no problems at all. And you can build your own computer with way more power than a Mac for way, way cheaper. Seriously, seriously consider it. But aside from that, I was on Windows mainly, and then I decided to try Hackintosh again. And I went ahead and did it. And since then, it's been fine. I got iMessage working and everything. The part I bought for my AirDrop is not working, but I think that's because the new motherboard I have actually has its own Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So, I mean, that's a little a little thing that doesn't work. And that kind of stuff happens when you have a Hackintosh. Um, my audio doesn't work either, but I have audio interfaces for that, so it's not a big deal. It doesn't really go to sleep. <laughs> so the computer will just stay on the whole time and the fans will spin forever, but it's not loud, it's fine, it's whatever. So there's little things like that with a Hackintosh that you'll get, but honestly, if that's not a deal breaker for you, I would seriously consider building a Hackintosh, building a Windows PC. So as far as buying parts, how did I go about that? The number one thing you need to do is go to Tony Mac x86, I believe it is. That website has all the information basically laid out for you. It has parts, compatible parts. It has how to install Mac OS on your Windows machine. It's just perfect. I used that for everything I needed and everything that I couldn't figure out and was able to generally find it. Most of the people on the site are super helpful. As a noob, it's hard to understand a lot of this stuff because they're talking like all kinds of crazy spaceship jargon about Hackintoshes. <laughs> but aside from that, if you can get through that stuff, that website is perfect. And that's where I went for my part choices and also how to install everything. I'm going to link below all the parts that I actually used on my Hackintosh, which everything works just fine and dandy. One big thing to keep in mind about Hackintoshes in this day and age is that Apple recently basically disowned Nvidia. And because of that, you can't just buy a normal like RTX or GTX or any of these graphics card. The best choice is gonna be to go with an AMD card because those are actually supported by Macs because that's what they're using in their actual machines. And that's a big thing for Hackintoshes as well. When it comes to your parts, make sure you're getting stuff that Apple actually uses and Apple supports. So right now I have a GTX 1080 and I can only do High Sierra. I can't upgrade to Mojave because Apple just said no, no more Nvidia. So there's no Nvidia drivers for Mojave. So I'm kind of just like stuck on High Sierra for now. If I wanted to, I could buy an AMD graphics card and then basically upgrade and be fine. So yet again, more examples of how with a Hackintosh, you can just do whatever you want to. So just to give y'all a little peek, here's my Hackintosh here. You see when I boot up my PC, I have the AOS symbol and everything, but then after that, I get my boot screen and I get to choose which OS I want to go into. And look at there, there's your little ample symbol and it's loading just like a Mac. Once I'm in there, it's totally a Mac. It thinks it's a Mac. Mine specifically thinks it's an iMac Pro and it works perfectly fine. Like I said, my sound doesn't work. It can't go to sleep. It doesn't really shut down correctly, but I have iMessage, I have everything I want. I have Final Cut. And this is where I do most of all my video editing all my graphic stuff and this is kind of my productivity side because I like the email stuff I have on here. I use Spark for Mac and it's just really awesome to have all my emails in a nice clean space. So I really, really love my Hackintosh. Another cool thing is since I have all this space in the case itself, I can put as many hard drives as I want to in there. So you'll see even here in my finder window, I have like 50,000 different hard drives because I have 
two internal hard drives and another hard drive for my video stuff and then two externals and then all the window side hard drives because Apple can see those too. And it's just really, it's really cool to be able to be like, oh yeah, I need a new thing, great. Instead of just being like, oh, I have an iMac, I have to buy external hard drives. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong, I love my Apple stuff and I would really buy another laptop. That's like the only way, but aside from that, I love, love my Hackintosh. It works great, Windows works great, Windows 10 is not so bad, and I have a cheaper solution to my computer, which I can upgrade and change whenever I want to. It's something I would highly consider. Seriously, you should highly consider it if you're like looking at IMAX and be like, why should I buy this? The answer is no, you shouldn't buy it. <laughs> so that was a quick look at my experience with the Hackintosh. I hope that helped you all out a little bit. And like I said, in the description, I'll have all kinds of links to Tony X86 for installation and parts. I have the part list for my stuff. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Like I said, again, I'm not a master at this stuff, but if you're looking into getting into it, it's something you're seriously considering, let me know and I'll be happy to give you some information from my side of things. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more information like this. And if you like what you saw, give me them thumbs for everyone's and I'll be with y'all next time. All right, peace.